This is Perspectivas Latinas, a community service of CAN TV. I'm your host, Juan Carlos Hernandez. If we want to know why our city moves and looks the way it does, in the present, we have to travel back to the past, to the people who had the vision and courage to shape our home. But the city's a place of constant movement and change. Today, our guests are here to talk about how they are helping to shape Chicago for current and future residents. With us, we have Erika Rangel from Enlace Chicago, Teresa Fraga from Pilsen Neighborhood, Neighbors, and Ricardo Lopez from the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Juan Carlos. Good morning. Uh, let's start off by talking, Ricardo, about uh, CMAP and what it is and sure. what it does and w what you do there. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, Juan Carlos, for giving us this opportunity to share about the work that CMAP does as an agency and talk a little bit about the Go to 2040 plan, what it is and how we're implementing it here in, 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 the, in our communities. Um, CMAP uh, was, uh, began, was established in the year 2005 mm -hmm. at the urgent need of local elected officials and business leaders uh, to merge uh, an agency to, to, to take an, a comprehensive approach at planning, integrating planning to incorporate land use and, uh, and transportation. Uh, since in 2007, the agency began to develop uh, the region's uh, first comprehensive plan in 100 years. In 100 uh, years. The last, the last plan that, that our city had was mm -hmm. the 1909 plan of, Chico of Daniel Burham, the Chicago plan of 1909. Right. Uh, since then, our region has developed in, in patterns that have been unsustainable, unsustainable. There's been homes that have crapped out of areas where it's been hard to reach by um, by transportation and virtually impossible by, by car. And so uh, in 2007, the agency began to develop a comprehensive plan called Go to 2040. Um, and it was adopted in, in, uh, in, Octo in, in October of 2010. Um, and since then, uh, we've been working to implement it. Okay, um, we'll definitely come back to what you're doing uh, in the agency, but um, let's hear from our, our two other guests. Uh, that is how, uh, what, do you, uh, what do you do with uh, Pilsen Neighbors and um, why, why do it? How long have you been there? Well, I've uh, been with Pilsen Neighbors since 1975. Mm -hmm. I've been on its board. It's a long time. A very long time. <laughs> and I have lived in the Pilsen community for 47 years. Our family arrived there in 1966. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started out uh, as just a regular resident who was concerned about, uh, at that time, mm -hmm. the construction of Benito Juarez High School, the Chicago 21 plan, stopping it, making sure that we weren't displaced mm -hmm. because the plan didn't call for where we were going to live. Okay. And so throughout the years, uh, leaders and residents in Pilsen have been organized to shape Pilsen into, uh, it's one of the agencies that has shaped Pilsen in, into what it is today. And we'll continue shaping it. And we'll continue shaping it. Because okay. once you uh, create a vision, it's just never ending, you know. It's, <laughs> there's always more. Definitely. Erika, tell us about your work with Enlace uh, Chicago. Sure. Yep. So um, Enlace Chicago, it's a community-based mm -hmm. uh, organization in Little Village. Um, and we, we were founded in 1990. Um, we focus on uh, lots of different things. Um, a few of them being education, the prevention of um, violence prevention in the neighborhood, organizing and advocacy, uh, particularly around issues of education, um, juvenile justice, and immigration. Um, and my department focuses on community and economic development. Um, but we make sure that any, any development is really resident-led and that we're um, including the voices of, of, of all community members um, in any kind of planning that takes place. Okay, and how does this work, uh, how does their work now connect with what CMAP has been doing and uh, sure. is doing and will plan to do in the future? Sure. Well, let me begin by um, talking a little bit about how we got to, to the work that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. uh, CMAP developed, as I mentioned, uh, the Go to 2040 plan, which looks at four, uh, four different themes. It looks at livable communities, uh, human capital, efficient governance, and uh, regional transport, regional mobility. Right. Uh, and so shortly after the plan was adopted in 2010, uh, we were fortunate to receive a sustainable, sustainable communities grant 
from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to start implementing the work. Uh, and, 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 and so what we did, what that program allowed us to do was to develop a program called Local Technical Assistance, where we're able to provide technical assistance to municipalities to be able to uh, help them develop plans of their own. Mm -hmm. um, and so we did a call for projects and uh, early in the year 2011 where we receive about 100, about over 220 projects from 130 municipalities. Wow. Uh, since then, we're now in the third year of, 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 the, of the local technical assistance program, and we have been working with various communities to develop comprehensive plans to look at uh, small study area plans, uh, to look at sustainability, housing, uh, business and retail development, uh, parks and open space. And so uh, we are now working with uh, Pilsen and Little Village uh, to develop a land use strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been, there's a lot of uh, past and current planning initiatives where we wanna uh, come to the table and engage with community partners to put it all together and develop a, a land use strategy uh, to look at a lot of the challenges and issues in both communities moving forward. And um, so, Looking at those challenges and strategies, uh, how exactly did uh, do residents get tied in? And these agencies, how do they come to form mm -hmm. a part of that? How does that uh, happen, um, Erika? Or, or I think it's important mm -hmm. to understand it in any good plan. Mm -hmm. um, it's very critical to engage mm -hmm. uh, the residents and stakeholders at the beginning of every planning process. Mm -hmm. Um, so that has been happening. Uh, I'm saying that right. just because Chicago is, is un infamous for um, not necessarily always bringing in the community right. or listening or even asking to begin with. That, that, uh, that, is, uh, that has made the difference this time around. Mm -hmm. And I can say for Pilsen that has been a very a vocal, proactive mm -hmm. uh, community in its, in its history mm -hmm. of organizing. And uh, whereas in the past, uh, we have had to, the community has had to be vocal to make its uh, needs known, uh, mm -hmm. whereas, uh, or we were either reacting to a plan mm -hmm. that is given to us or that the city develops and we are reacting. Instead of... Um, the opportunity now mm -hmm. is, uh, is that it is different. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in my... Uh, observation and my feeling and thinking, it has brought a new dynamic. This, this is a, what we consider, or what I consider, a true partnership, where we are able to sit down with uh, CMAP, mm -hmm. with Department of Planning and Development, and with the residents voicing their ideas, mm -hmm. their concerns, their needs. Uh, this has brought us at a table together in a community public setting where they are listening mm -hmm. to whatever is brought up to the table. And what this allows us in the future, I, I see that as very good, a very good feeling, finally. Right. Uh, and it also sets us up for, for accountability, for all of us to be accountable in the future. Instead of blaming it's, people uh, or reacting, as you said, you're now uh, getting into that process of the planning. Right. Has that been the experience? Yeah. In, uh, um, in Little Village, more and more we're seeing that plans are already being developed prior to any developer or any city agency approaching us um, for input. As a matter of fact, um, we, we did a quality of life plan back in 2005, mm -hmm. and this year we revamped that, that, pro that plan. So we looked at what was, what was accomplished, what do we still need to work on, and what do residents really want to see going forward. So that quality of life plan, um, we want to make sure that any planning that, that we do going forward really mirrors all of the input that was, that was, um, that's in that plan. Mm -hmm. um, lots of community organizations in Little Village uh, are already doing this type of work, and we want to make sure that any existing work is, is, is valued, is really um, uh, taken into account. With, with, with any agency. So um, having the residents at the table to, to voice their, their opinions and their concerns is just another way that we can make sure that, that our, um, uh, our values and our, our ideas for how the neighborhood should be shaped are really taken into account. 
And if yes. I may add, Juan Carlos, mm -hmm. I think this is a, a, a great example of, of government collaboration with the community. Um, uh, the Land Use Strategy Plan, it's a project led by the Chicago Department of of planning and development, mm -hmm. where CMAP has it's the, the uh, where CMAP will be providing the technical assistance to develop the plan, um, and given the the uh, uh, the current initiatives in both communities and the and the strengths of both communities, uh, CMAP contracted uh, both PNCC and Enlace Chicago to help us in ensuring that the community is engaged and that we're building off existing and, uh, and past uh, plans that exist in the community. Okay, so, um, Erika, you, men um, you mentioned something interesting, and uh, Ricardo certainly touched on it, uh, this in well, Teresa too, this inclusion of the community, but you pointed to something that happened in 2005. Um, that was the gathering of residents, right? It didn't matter whether they were undocumented or documented, because you know in um, our community there is that issue. Right. Uh, how did you draw people in uh, to these, these meetings, these, these, these discussions, and um, what kind of ideas did they come up with, and what kind of challenges did you, did you see, and well, uh, what vision, because we're all kind of touching mm -hmm. on that, uh, vision did you have for, or did the community have for, for the, its future, well, present and future, actually? Right. Um, and I can't really speak as much to the 2005 plan as I can to the 2013 okay. plan because it's the most recent in my head. Um, and why the changes? Why, why, was it, uh, had, why did it have to be tweaked? So yeah. really it was a five-year plan. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So what we wanted to do was make sure that it wasn't just sitting in, in a drawer, dust drawer somewhere, and that we were actually using it to guide our work. Um, but also to revisit, cause, because like we said, we, you've said, communities change, mm -hmm. needs mm -hmm. change, um, and we wanted to make sure that, um, that we went back, revisited the plan, um, to assure that any planning going forward um, is, is up to date. Mm -hmm. um, so what we did was we invited, this year we invited um, uh, over 500 community residents to different assemblies, um, community organizations, anybody that lived in Little Village, works in Little Village, has some kind of stake in the community, was invited to participate. And um, they were really invited to be there to have their, their voices heard. So if they had a vision for what the community should look like, they should be at the table and they should really um, make sure that that um, their their ideas are 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 put in the plan. Mm -hmm. So really, that's 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 how the process worked. Any okay. any you you could split up into um, groups depending on your your specific interests and really give good um, feedback on what you what you thought the 2005 plan um, could have done a little better and also what you would like to see going forward. So um, the, the plan actually came up with a bunch of strategies around um, housing, uh, green space and recreation, mm -hmm. open space, um, economic development, um, immigration issues, health. So it really touched on a lot of different issues. Um, and now we have, it's really a tool that a lot of community organizations use to make sure that, that the work that they're doing is, is guided in something solid. Definitely. And mm -hmm. did something similar happen yes. in Little Village? I mean, uh, I'm sorry, in Pilsen? Yes, in Pilsen, mm -hmm. the, something similar, the same strategies. It's the mm -hmm. quality of life plan. Uh, all the Pilsen uh, community stakeholders, practically all organizations were involved in that planning. It was a very uh, good, very tedious process. And I think that was the first time <laughs> that the community actually, the entire community actually came together uh, to put together the, the quality of life plan. And we came up with, under the same process, came up with five task forces. Mm -hmm. One was education, economy, um, community image, mm. uh, housing, mm -hmm. and families. Okay. Families, uh, youth, and safety. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, the quality of life plan actually is a very, there are, it, it's kind of the next step, but it's mm -hmm. kind of the next uh, real step mm -hmm. uh, where in, in terms of green spaces. Okay. And there's a great opportunity that's already been envisioned and planned in, in, in the quality of life plan that is very ripe for this process we're in right now. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So now these, these ideas are coming forward um, in some sense independently of what CMAP is doing, but joining in with right. what, what, your, mm -hmm. uh, what this agency has uh, 
planned. Sure. Mm -hmm. So both uh, communities, uh, Pilsen and Little Village, have quality of life plans, which mm -hmm. essentially are a vision of the community. Uh, what does the community envision their neighborhoods right. being uh, 20, uh, 30 years from now? And so what uh, th the land use strategy plan uh, uh, aims at doing is bringing those visions and, and integrating them into a land, a land use a strategy plan uh, that will essentially be adopted by the city's planning commission mm -hmm. uh, to implement. Um, and as Ms. Fraga mentioned, uh, a plan that will look at some of the uh, common challenges in both communities, uh, such as improving and expanding access to parks and open spaces. Hu uh, a huge need, definitely. Right. Promoting business and retail development, mm -hmm. but also exploring uh, and ha uh, exploring housing options mm -hmm. uh, that can meet the needs of residents, of various residents, both communities. Um, uh, while they have similar uh, similarities, they share different uh, history, mm -hmm. they are uh, culture, uh, assets, and challenges. And so the idea is to look at those and how do we integrate them to develop to promote quality of life for for its residents. Mm -hmm. So you touched on that and I think that's been especially one of the most salient issues um, and it, it, it still remains one of the most salient issues in our city is housing. Uh, how is CMAP working with uh, these two communities mm -hmm. to uh, develop housing and uh, that is inclusive? Um, sure. uh, before the show we were talking about how some people see Housing is simply an investment, which isn't necessarily wrong or bad, right. but um, how do you include people that see housing as sure. buying a stake in a community because mm -hmm. that's where they want to remain? Right. How is all that, that process working right. out? Uh, so this is a process uh, mm -hmm. that it's approximately going to take us about 18 months approximately. Um, over the course of those 18 months, the public will have um, several opportunities to participate and be involved, provide their feedback. Um, we just recently had uh, held two public meetings, uh, each in, one at in each community, where uh, the, f the topic of the meetings was uh, focused on, on parks and open spaces. Um, mm -hmm. Moving forward, uh, the idea is to continue to have public meetings where we're going to be looking at various topics, one of them being housing. It was a, a topic uh, that, came, uh, that came up in, in conversations, both in Pilsen and Little Village, uh, at our first public meeting, and so at this meeting, the idea is to partner with with those uh, existing groups in the communities that are doing work in housing and, and looking at what they're doing, building off of that, but also looking at what are the necessities, what are the needs mm -hmm. of the residents, what kind of uh, housing um, options do we want to have, do we want to provide, doing market studies to seeing. Uh, the projections as to how those communities are changing, um, and in, in, in 20 years from now, you know what are going to be the needs. Uh, mm -hmm. The communities, as Erika mentioned, uh, over the years they change, right. and so how do we look at those projections and make sure that we're developing housing options to meet the needs not only of today's residents but of tomorrow's residents as well. And what are some of those greatest housing needs uh, in Pilsen and in Little Wood? Just, let's start with. Uh, that is, uh, well, definitely affordable housing is, mm -hmm. uh, has been and will always be a great need. Uh, there are also, uh, there's also an interest of mm -hmm. uh, many of the, fa uh, the young families that grew up in Pilsen, uh, mm -hmm. left, went to college, and are now in a, situ in a financial situation where they can purchase their own home. Mm -hmm. And everybody, I think we all want to go backward to where we came from, mm -hmm. especially if mm -hmm. that community has future and is thriving and there's a great history there. And it's close to and downtown. Roots, <laughs> and it's 10 <laughs> minutes from downtown. You can walk right. to downtown mm -hmm. if, it's, if, if necessary. Right. Uh, so those families, those young families that want to come back mm -hmm. uh, would like to have a stake in the community, and mm -hmm. the way to have that is by being able to purchase. And uh, new housing, mm -hmm. new housing, where whether it's row housing, whether it's uh, uh, townhouses, uh, that'll be the, th that's the great opportunity that people have right now, is to mm -hmm. come and voice that okay. in these public meetings. Great. Mm -hmm. Erika? Yeah. Very similar, actually, to Pilsen, um, where, I mean, affordable housing is a need. Where, uh, 
we for can't really exp yeah yeah <laughs> we can't really expand the city limits you know far beyond <laughs> where they are now um, so we're working with limited space and we need more space mm -hmm. um, so definitely more more um, housing development um, affordable housing um, but also helping those homeowners who are who already exist right. with you know mm -hmm. foreclosure prevention loan modifications so that they can hold on to their homes and also um, keep up with their homes with beautifying their space and making sure that it that they can they can keep up with it right that that's a very good point because I am yes. I've driven through parts of Englewood um, just thinking about another neighborhood and there are these huge brownstones gray stones beautiful buildings that you I I reflect them like these went up when jobs were just boom, you know, were mm -hmm. widely available in our city um, and good manufacturing jobs. And um, whoever built them intended to keep them and keep them up, right? But that money's gone. So um, I always ask myself, how do you keep uh, a neighborhood from falling apart, houses, individual houses from falling apart? How do you find that support? Um, right. Is that also part of because, because you've mentioned the word beautifying and you sure. mentioned green spaces. How does that fit into this this mm -hmm. plan uh, with C of CMAP? The land use strategy plan would mm -hmm. uh, entail three different phases. Mm -hmm. uh, the first phase is uh, engaging stakeholders, doing key stakeholder interviews with some of the uh, key players in the communities, uh, gathering, gathering data looking at maps, mm -hmm. uh, studying previous plans as the quality of life plans, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and getting an idea to, of what are the existing conditions mm -hmm. in both neighborhoods. What do we have to work with? Uh, the second phase would then look at uh, of, 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 of opportunities, uh, recommendation ideas, where, um, to, where, where we develop ideas to meet those needs. I think in terms of housing, um, uh, looking at, at, at some of these housing stocks that are historical, that are also uh, beautiful, that are great mm -hmm. structures, and how do we um, revitalize them? Um, we live in an urban, in, in an urbanized uh, city where uh, lack of, of space, it's, uh, it's right. an issue. So how do we S make good in, use? Especially in right? areas like Pilsen and Little mm -hmm. Village. Mm -hmm. So how do we make good use of, of underutilized and vacant uh, spaces in our neighborhoods? Mm -hmm. uh, and so th I would say that would be th we p that's how the plan looks at at, at, at targeting housing as one of the, one of the topics. Uh, another issue, and I think it's a bigger issue for um, a Little Village than it is for Pilsen, is transportation, right? Public transportation. Um, how is how are you working with CMAP or and within the community to to address some of, uh, some of those issue that issue specifically? Mm -hmm. Well, um, there are a number of organizations in Little Village that are do, that do a lot of work with mm -hmm. making sure that we have um, that public transportation needs are being met, um, and that that um, any opportunities or any any new uh, public transportation options are um, not just available, but have the resources behind them to keep them consistent and keep them operating. Um, there, the new 31st Street bus. Is, is a great new thing, but we've got to make sure that, that it, it runs often enough for people to use it and that it can take people all the way to the lake. Right. Um, and Because um, yeah, 31st does run all the way to the lake. Right. Mm -hmm. there's, a, like, mm -hmm. there's a little, you know, you got to make a little turn. But Yeah, um, or, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. once you enter uh, McKinley Park, right, around that area. Around, well, right around Western. It, well, yeah, that's know, right. The, right around Western. Dead ends, and you have mm -hmm. to go into, yeah, go a little I, further south. Right. Um, but it picks back up again. Um, yeah, but uh, there's also, I mean, there's other um, creative ways that mm -hmm. we're trying to make sure that, that we can connect residents from all corners of Little Village to existing open spaces. And um, with this CMAP project, we're, we, we wanted, we, those plans were presented to community members and community members really had input on how they could, um, we could connect to, open, to existing spaces. Um, and also taking into account where are there public, I mean, already routes of public transportation so that we, we make sure that um, they either align with those, with those routes or um, we're aware of them so that we're not, you mm -hmm. know, overcrowding a street. Mm -hmm. um, as many bicyclists and pedestrians um, are, you know, need routes that, that are safe mm -hmm. um, and, and mindful of all the car traffic that we have. Right. If I may add, I think transportation, it's, an, it's a critical component. Um, 
when normally when we think of transportation, we think of the roads, we think of right. the highways, we think of, of the public transportation, the bus, the trains, but sidewalks are also part of transportation. Sidewalks, um, and, and when we're talking about uh, livable communities, uh, you know, what are livable communities? They're healthy, they're safe, they're walkable. Uh, they provide efficient uh, options to get around to your daily needs, to work, to, to, to school, to your jobs. And so I think the, 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 in both communities, it's, a, it's a, 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 an important aspect of, of quality of life. How do we look mm -hmm. at uh, motorized options, to improve motorized options, but also looking right. at non-motorized options? And one of the, the topics that we're looking that we're looking into, which was covered in this last public meeting, is uh, uh, open spaces and parks. Um, how do we integrate land use with trans that supports transportation? Mm -hmm. Looking at uh, pedestrian and bicycle uh, trails, routes, right. uh, to provide mobility. Which is growing. Right. Parking. Parking, oh, yeah. Parking is a very, very, very big issue. It's awful in most places. Uh, especially <laughs> uh, in, uh, in uh, in areas where multiple housing is mm -hmm. being built mm -hmm. because uh, the developers are only required to provide one space, mm. uh, but re being realistic, there's two cars. Or more. Or more, <laughs> and so the, the existing residents take the brunt, take the hit, take right, the hit. Right, right. And so parking is, is a big issue Definitely. all over. Mm -hmm. And how do we look at that issue? Um, you know, providing other options, drive for mobility, uh, mm -hmm. where for instance, public transportation, we want to make sure that it's not the last option, but the first. But the, there's also other um, options for how to get around that promote uh, a health, healthier living lifestyles. Right, uh, right now, it's, uh, the, the com communities don't have their infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, the city's doing a lot of great work with, with implementation of a bicycle network. Uh, how do we create the infrastructure to make sure that uh, we're not only uh, providing those options, but we're also making them safe? Okay, great. So. Um, we're basically out of time. Uh, well, but well, we are out of time actually. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming today and sharing your ideas and the vision you have for these communities. It's very exciting, and um, I look for I look forward to seeing a, a lot of these projects take life. And thank I want to before mm -hmm. we leave, I want to encourage uh, there's uh, uh, residents, viewers, to get involved. Sure, uh, in definitely. the planning of this of, of this development of this plan, that is crucial. Um, definitely. Anyone who's interested in more information or wants to get involved, they can visit the project website at uh, www.cmap.illinois spelled out uh, forward slash LTA. That's uh, a long name. Uh, it's a long name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, that, all of that information will be um, available through the program and right. um, online. Right. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks Thank you so us. much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Perspectivas Latinas is a community service of CAN-TV. If your nonprofit organization would like to work with CAN-TV, call 312-738-1400 and ask for nonprofit services. Tune into Perspectivas Latinas for local issues and concerns every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. on CAN-TV 21. I'm Juan Carlos Hernandez. Thank you for joining us.